Hey, Kevin from Hats and Guitars from JJ Hat Center in New York. Um, if you guys are new to us, uh, JJ Hat Center is the oldest hat shop in New York. We opened in 1911. Uh, 1911, we had a different name back then. It was uh, Young's Hatters. And uh, there were a couple of owners. And uh, when I got here uh, 25 years ago, uh, it was a different owner too, uh, Jack. Jack and John um, were the J&J, &J, JJ Hat Center. He was my first boss, and uh, later on his manager wound up buying the store from him, and it blossomed. Now the shop is owned by somebody a lot more open-minded, interesting, more new school, less old school, but has the old school training too. Um, and... Um, Things are, it, it, the shop has really blossomed. You know, we have a custom shop, we make our own hats, we design different hat lines from certain companies. So, a lot of the things you get from JJ's are custom made already. Um, for instance, if you need like an interesting color in a hat, um, you know, and typical American brands like, you know, Stetson or uh, Australian Acubras, these big, popular, huge brands don't make the colors. So, you know, we go to a custom brand um, and we say, listen, we need a really nice, high quality hat. Um, well, we don't want black, brown, and gray. We need taupe, uh, maybe something unusual. If you've got, like, you know, a burgundy, uh, a navy that's not too dark, you know. And we like to match it up with, you know, this band and that band and make it look a particular way. And those are called custom shops. You know, they have uh, particular finishes. Uh, you can choose from qualities of felt, um, different edges, bound edge, uh, raw edge, welted edge, whip stitch. You can order different crown shapes, uh, different band, sh band widths and colors, and you know, all those things are done to our specs. Uh, do we want the brim to be a little stiffer? You know, do we want it to be the regular way that they do it, extra stiffener. How about the crown? You know, all the different things. Uh, our logo should be inside on the sweatband. It could be on the lining too. And each little option costs us more and more and more. Um, and it becomes like a custom hat, you know. And um, we have a pretty nice array of them, I think. And they're, they're becoming classics now. Like the hat I'm wearing um, used to be from an old, another Italian company with, that had a bankruptcy and. Um, after the bankruptcy, we went to other brands, high-end brands, and we decided to go with one called Rocher. Uh, Rocher does uh, our uh, JJ line, the Seville, the Valencia, all those hats. So, and um, this is essentially the Seville. The only difference is this has a binding. We used to call this hat the Classico years ago. Now it's called the Seville. And the Classico with the binding on the edge was called the Classico Plus. Um, we don't really sell that, but we do a three-inch version of this called the Madrid. So it's like, you know, a three-inch. For instance, here's my three-inch. So in other words, you know, we did a, a two and three-eighth inch custom. We did a three-inch custom. We wanted to mix it up. So the big brim one we did with a, a bound edge. Because on a big brim, it looks a little more subtle. You know, it's harder to notice and stuff. This, this doesn't have a bound edge, but... Three-inch brim version of the, you know, this Seville-shaped hat. Um, it's called the Madrid. We do that one too, with the bound edge. Um, but that's that's what custom is all about. That uh, you don't have to go to a custom hat maker because we already did it and we ordered them, you know, in quantity. So instead of being custom prices like you know eight hundred, twelve hundred, blah blah blah, you winds up being you know a little bit more affordable. And the quality is, you know, if you ask anybody who's got a Valencia or a Seville or a, um, a Ken, or um, we used to call the Ken something else, it was called the Cordoba. If you have a Cordoba, it's the same as the Ken with a welted edge, and uh, those are half price, anything that's left. So all that stuff is exquisite. Ask any of those people what the felt feels like, how does it compare to Stetson, um, or their other American hats, and um, 
There is a difference. Um, you know, for musicians, there's something called boutique guitar makers. Like, for instance, everybody loves the uh, Fender Telecaster. There's a company called Lucky Dog. Lucky Dog Guitars. It's uh, one fellow, Anthony, who does, you know, like the most exquisite Telecaster you could ever think of to your specs. You know, every piece of wood you choose, you know, you can have any finish, any color. You could do wood carvings, pictures of people like done in 3, 3D, you know, like Mount Rushmore carved into your guitar. You could have collages of like American flags and like you could have it look beat up or have whatever you want to do, sparkle finish. He's complete. I've seen him do uh, guitars for like Hank Williams Jr. and people like that. Lucky Dog is crazy, you know. It's going to cost you like, I forgot how much, like, you know, between twenty five hundred and thirty five hundred bucks at least, I think, for a guitar. Where you can also pick up a Telecaster on Amazon for eighty nine dollars, which will be probably less than a Lucky Dog case, you know, or, or shipping or something. But um, uh, it it all depends, you know. They both look like Telecasters to the lane, but you know we know the difference when somebody sits there and sands every single piece of wood by hand and measures it and carves it and just, you know, it's almost like getting a sculpture, like a piece of art made by one man. And it takes a lot of time and uh, you make sure to get like that best necks, you know, like these, the woods he uses on the necks, you look at it and it's like, it's got so much natural figure to it that it, it looks like almost like a gemstone or something. But uh, yeah, if you're really uh, curious about just good woodworking, you know, if you like that, um, even if you're not a guitar player, go on Facebook and look at this guy, Lucky Dog Guitars. He's down south, and um, wow, you, know, you got to see the, the, you know, talk about custom. Um, if I could get one of those one day, I'd be a happy camper. And um, same thing goes for hats. It's like I don't know. I just gave him a cool plug. I, I think I was trying to sort of, you know give you an example of a really nice custom shop. Um, that's a custom shop. Any, for every single piece, you know, um, you don't like the, the knobs on a Telecaster, he'll give you ones that are custom machined and look like, you know, Mad Max knobs or, you know, like the, the hardware. He has them hand machined, you know, um, to look like uh, the grill of a particular car. I think like a, you know, a 60s, um, God, what it was, and something like a Mustang or some particular really exotic uh, old muscle car had a particular grill shape, and he designed his uh, bridge after that. You know, it's really cool designing everything, like you know, custom machine, custom cut, the woods, you know, the top, top, top. That's like what it's that's the equivalent of getting a custom cap or a custom hat. It's like we get to do all that stuff as, you know, um, as JJ, the owner, gets to, you know, talk to them and say, okay, we want this lining to say our name in here, you know, in gold, and, uh, you know, we want our name also over here in gold. We want, uh, okay, we want the logo because people like the logo, or we don't want the, you know, your, your brand logo here, whatever. Um, do we want a pin? Do we want a feather? You know, what kind of edge do we want? What kind of texture do we want? We want it to be velvety, not velvety. Do we want it to be furry, shiny and furry? You know, um, what kind of crown do we want? Uh, center crease, a teardrop, uh, high, wide, low. You know, what kind of uh, pinch? Um, what type of band? What color band? How wide is the band? What type of bow is it? Is it a double bow? You know? uh, that's a single bow, I think. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a double. There's, there's another one down at the bottom there. But um, every speck, the leather, you know, what kind of leather do you like? Do you want it thick, soft, uh, heavy grade? Do you want it brown, black, gray, green, or taupe? Um, every little aspect of this hat, the dimensions on the brim, the um, you know, the colors, color combinations, they're all picked out, so there's so many different specs made that it's like, you're not going to find that same hat someplace else. You might find something, you know, like another person who carries Rocher, that carries something real similar, but, you know, custom is custom. 
everything you see at JJ's is like that, except for certain models that are real classics, like um, just about our whole cap collection. When you walk in, there are showcases. You know those big glass showcases that you see in like old retail stores? We have like a bunch of them. One for small size caps, one for mediums, large, extra large, double X. And it just goes like the whole length of the store. Big, long, you know, I don't know how long they are, maybe six, seven feet long or something. Um, I'm gonna guess something like that, six feet maybe. And, um, you know, they have the sliding wood doors in the back. And each showcase is packed to the top with stacks of caps. One half is flat caps, the other half are newsboard caps. But we have a stack of, you know, Irish flat caps and another company Irish, you know, uh, some with ear flaps. We have Harris tweeds here, we have Capus caps, we have leather caps, we have summer caps down. You know, there's all these ones and that's a small case. And then, uh, then there's a medium case and it's repeated and repeated. So there's just thousands and thousands of caps in every one of those, just about every single one is custom done by us. We go to Stetson Europe, we say we want this shape, we want the Hatteras shape. Okay, we have these fabrics, what would you like to do? Well, we need solid linen, black, natural, maybe a navy. We want to see what you have in some patterns, they'll show us patterns, we'll pick a bunch of them. You know, it's mm, semi-custom, that's a semi-custom kind of thing. You know, you're picking a style and a color and putting them together. But still, you know, it's like... Uh, Pretty much, it's all done to our taste, and everything is hand chosen and created by us in a way. We want to sell flat caps that are skinny one year. We order skinny stuff, and uh, you know we order it to the taste that we feel is going to sell, that people want, you know, demand. And also, we have to try to look ahead a season um, to you know think what's played out. Um, and what's going to be popular next year, along with ordering the standards and classics that always sell, like black, natural, herringbone, um, you know, things like that. Um, black leather caps, brown leather caps, you know, things like that have been a staple item for decades and decades, and then one year they could, you know, just nobody asked for them anymore. So you have to be intuitive. You can't really order cases of caps to last you a whole year if nobody's buying them. You gotta be careful with that stuff. Um, that's another way you find hats in the sales section. So if we order something and it winds up getting played out and nobody wants them anymore, it goes into the sales section, you know. So we can clear the room, pay some bills, clear the room on the space for new hats and stuff. Um, all right, so um, I'm getting a new uh, Ashthorpe guitar. The people um, make this one. I don't know if you remember this blue guitar, but uh, Ashthorpe uh, has a very wonderful lady there uh, named Jennifer that uh, always gives me very good customer service, very efficient and pleasant. And, you know, she's real cool. Um, she doesn't, uh, you know, make me do the work. She just kind of writes it all out. Kev, you have to. You know, include this, this, this. It's like really thoughtful and stuff and um, it shows in their products and stuff. Their stuff is really, yeah, I mean, you know I like budget guitars. I have like a thing for it. Um, you know, I still have like my, if you look behind me here, my Les Paul, which is, you know, that's like a, at least a $3,500, you know, from the 70s, probably, a, probably more now. Uh, I think I paid even more for that. And then this one is the Zappa Roxy SG, super rare. Those I've seen selling uh, for four thousand, five thousand, and um, you know they're expensive guitars. The Reverends, all four of them, like a thousand piece or something, you know, um, a little less used. So I like good stuff, but I also like really cheap stuff too. Uh, I have a thing for it. Like uh, I think budget stuff has changed and. Um, I like contacting those small companies, like the people who make the um, the little mini pedals that you see on Amazon for twenty dollars and nineteen dollars. That amazes me. Some of them are really, really good, and you see advertisements for like two hundred dollar pedals and stuff. And then here's somebody who comes along with something for like twenty bucks. That sounds really good. You know, you could play a concert with it. It's good enough. 
Um, it's not fancy or trendy looking with graphics and sparkle and this and that and a fancy name that you can show off, but it's it does the job. It's 100% reliable. It's made out of like you know uh, aluminum alloy. It's good strong switches, LEDs, true bypass, electronics. Everything's good. I'm into that. Um, I think it's a great thing. I like when something's really cheap and you could just make some amazing, mind-blowing music on it. I think it's cool. I don't care how much a guitar costs more. Like it's kind of uh, that's irrelevant to me. I like something that's good and speaks to me and inspires me in new ways um, or old ways, but just inspires me. And um, sometimes the cheapies play just as good as the really good ones. Sometimes not, um, but Ashthorpe seems to, I've had two of them so far and they're both really good. So they're going to be sending me an electric guitar next. Uh, I ordered it in black. So I don't think I have any black guitars, so just straight black and it's got a maple fingerboard, which I like. Uh, I prefer maple. I've only got, what, three maple boards, I think, there? Yeah, not enough. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's a, it's a little uh, shredder, um, a black guitar kit. It comes with like, a really nice padded gray kick bag. So I'm excited. I'm um, getting a new toy. Um, but let's, let's talk now, uh, not about Ashthorpe guitars, but let's, let's talk about um, custom hats and stuff, too. Um, when we order custom, it's generally going to be something that's higher end. Um, it's not always super high end, but um, it's generally not cheap stuff um, because the cheaper stuff doesn't really come come that way. You know, we could go to Stetson and they'll have like expensive Western hats, and they might have a few cheap Western hats. Like you know, we could get a hat that'll sell for sixty five bucks or something that's made in Mexico, and that's really cool and stuff. Um, but the custom stuff is not really available in that, you know, those grades. They're usually a little more expensive. Um, I was chatting with somebody from one of the viewers or something that um, was having, you know, like issues. He was a little confused about what to buy or something. I forgot what he was asking me, but um, somewhere in his conversation, he's like, uh, yeah, I really love the Valencia. That's in incredible, but it's a little out of my price range. Well... The Valencia is one of those custom hats. It's the exact same shape as this. This is the shape. Although, you know, think of it in, um, like, gray without all this. You know, just a regular color. It doesn't have the binding on it. The Valencia is the same hat as the Seville. Um, we do that hat in two different furs. So one of them is made out of rabbit or rabbit and hair, and the other one is beaver with mink. So the Valencia is pure beaver, 100% pretty much, almost, with a touch of mink. They use a touch of mink in there to, um, I, I've heard it gives it a sort of a texture and a feel. Um, that's, but I, I don't really know, but um, that's what I've heard, so I can't confirm it. But uh, there's a certain, like, an oily quality that mink has to it, um, and, you know, it, it could be a status thing that if you add mink, you know, it's expensive, so it's a way to justify spending a little more. It could be, but I know it's traditional too, that you could go back um, into the real golden age of hat making, and there was a Stetson model. Um, you know, Stetson had all these weird classic names, like uh, the Stetson Key Club, which had a little gold key pin on the side. It was really cool, you know, they're great when they still have the keys in it. They had the Stetson Playboy collection, which had a little Playboy bunny pin in the side. A lot of really good classic things. The Stradaliners came in these like cool trapezoid silver modern boxes. It kind of looks like that, that Jetsons, Jet Age, 1950s futuristic stuff. Really cool, like light blue and silver, like oval shaped hat box. Awesome. They have tons of cool stuff from their past. Um, like a lot of really nice things Stetson. Sorry about going off on this tangent. But um, there was one one uh, hat that Stetson made called um, The Touch of Mink, or it might have been called A Touch of Mink. One of the others were just Touch of Mink. There was a Stetson hat and that was like, it was either the name of the hat or the name of a series 
but I've seen them before, and that's a really cool hat. Um, it's been it's been done for a while, you know, like a, a touch of mink or like a some mink with mostly beaver or whatever, mostly whatever hat is um, traditional. So Valencia has got that, and um, going back home now from the tangent back to the uh, original thought now. Um, the, the Valencia is kind of like, for somebody who loves the Seville, the Seville is already like a premium hat. It's kind of like, you know, their version of this, you know. Um, but if you want that in super, super specs, like, kind of like the best that Roche has, and he's known for being a felt maker. He's like this master felt maker who comes out with these really cool, um, you know, like the natural, he has a you know, um, 100x beaver felt that just comes from the beaver's chest. The, uh, not the long furry stuff that beavers, but just the underneath kind of downy stuff. They shear that off and they use that and that's 100x and they don't stiffen it and they don't dye it. They just leave it what they call clear beaver. Um, it's another old time Stetson term. You know, you would see clear, not, well, it's, it's an old time hat term. Clear beaver is just like, uh, natural beaver that has not been colored or anything. It's just pure. It's clear. So it has a particular color that's very, very appealing. It's like a, um, it's almost like that color of a band-aid. You know that like sort of like a tan, kind of a light beige color, but it's like, it's not that band-aid color. It's more like a, a very light grayish pastel version of that. So hard to describe. Um, almost like between a light, light pearl gray and a light, light tan. But it's like this buff color. Um, boy, I really don't even know what to compare it to, but clear beaver hats, I'm sure you could just Google it, Google image it. They have a particular color. It's the color of the natural. So if you go on JJ Hat Center's website, um, look up The Natural, put that in the search, or just put that in Google, The Natural JJ Hat Center, and you'll see the color of this. That's clear beaver. Um, it's awesome. It looks fantastic. The color is great, and the feel is great. You know, the, the beaver with, um, with the mink is even nicer. It has this, like, it's super soft, like, really fine, fine velvet. It almost feels like you're not touching it very hard, like you're, you're just barely touching it, because it's hard to explain. And the, the velvet touch is almost accentuated by that mink in a way that feels like, I always say it feels like those um, lotion tissues. You know how you feel it? It's like, okay, this is super soft, but there's something like kind of, almost like, I don't know, lubricating the, the experience in a dry way. You don't feel wet, but you feel that it's like moving fast, kind of. It's like that. It's got this kind of uh, soft, maybe like soft yet oily feel. It's oily, but like a dry feel. It's hard, so hard to describe the way it feels. But uh, the beaver mink has that feel. It's like uh, they just keep sanding it down to a finer, finer, finer grit. And um, it's, it's fantastic. The Seville... You can't tell the difference. Um, you can't really tell the difference if somebody's wearing them in the same colors. It's really hard. The trained eye can tell, like, somebody who's been selling both hats for a really long time. You could kind of see some differences here and there. Um, I'm going to say the main difference is almost like if you're looking, like, right at the felt, you know, like, kind of like a, a close-up of the felt surface itself, the texture of it. It's like the the regular rabbit and hair version looks, um, you know, like a little bit porous. You can see like the, you know, the texture of felt. But when you look at the beaver one, it's kind of like, it, it doesn't have that like little fuzziness to it. You know, when you're looking really closely at it, it's like really sharp. Like the edges are super sharp and it's been sanded super, super fine. Um, so it's like you could kind of see that, like the way it breaks, you know, 
the, the sharpness of it. It seems like really sharp, yet um, not thin, you know, not thin and floppy. It's got some good, like, you know, like, you know, but very, um, very sharp, yet I think it's dense or something. Thin, yet really dense. But um, there is a feel, and I'm going to say it's probably most of it, you know, it's kind of a little bit of a status symbol, a lot of it is the feel, um, and they wear very well as far as how they wear, you know, is it going to wear out, um, you know, stuff like grabbing and making holes, wearing out a hole, it's not going to do any better in that fashion, but the way it responds to... Um, to reshaping, the way it responds to, you know, you, you keeping it in shape, like shape retention, it's going to perform a little bit better, like uh, less less apt to, to curl or, you know. But yeah, there's like a little bit better performance. I don't know if there's a huge difference in waterproofing. Um, I don't really find most hats to be not waterproof. Um, it's not like I ever have a problem with them leaking water or anything. The big problem with hats is that when they get wet, the next day they just look like crap, you know? So, it's not like the water went through it, it's more like they dry wrong, they sag. The, the, crown, the crown is however you pinched it, if you were like this, you know, when you took it off, it dries like that, and then the brim just sags and gets flat, you know? So when you put it on, it's flat yet, like, pulled. Kind of, you, know, and you start to get this out of shape thing that's like so subtle but the hat just lost its crisp edge its new edge and it doesn't have all you know that doesn't have this curve anymore that's one thing okay so you've got the floppy brim that you don't like the way the brim is anymore and then the crown is a little bit different it could be like you know locked into this particular pinch or something so it's almost like the problem is not the fact that it isn't waterproof. It's the fact that the hat is so soft that the weight of the water pushes it down and then people dry it wrong. Um, if the hat was way thicker and stiffer, like a cowboy hat or something, you know, like a ranch or a really thick, you know, hard cowboy hat, it would probably be, it would be bulletproof. There'd be no difference the next day. Um, stiffness and hardness, you know, all that stuff gives it strength. Um, for a hat to have strength in its flexibility, it has to be very high quality. So in other words, cheaper, cheaper felt, you can stiffen the heck out of it, you could use lots of it, make it dense, and it'll do the job. But if you want a hat to be soft, flexible, you know, all that kind of stuff, it has to be really high grade, otherwise, it's not going to perform. It'll just, it'll curl up and it'll just do all these things that you don't want it to do. Uh, you'll have no flange, you won't be able to flip, it'll just, yeah, there's just no control over it. Getting back to the custom hat thing, I think that's one reason why JJ's is a little bit different from other stores. That we don't just go to Stetson and say, you know, give us a uh, whippet in gray, black, and tan. Give us a temple in brown, gray, tan, and this. Um, we create styles. Um, so a lot of times the big companies, they're so big that they're so in demand that um, hats don't always arrive. Sometimes they don't arrive, or they arrive really late, and then you know we cancel the order because it's just too late. Sometimes they come way off season, and we just take them anyway. But um, big hat companies don't always deliver uh, on time, and they don't always have the quantity that you need. So sometimes going custom is, um, it's a good, reliable option, you know. And um, 
the companies that are a little bit smaller, you know, they're big, they're doing international business, but not like, you know, like number one, you know, huge, huge, they tend to get things right uh, and be efficient. Where the really huge companies, it's kind of like, okay, uh, we, we made some brown today. We're going to send some brown out to all of our, our accounts, you know, keep them happy. The stuff comes in and drips and drabs and, you know, here and there and stuff. The little bit smaller companies, you get like, you know, a huge, big, just dollies and like, what do you call it, pallets and pallets of hats, you know, just coming in where the whole shop is just filled to the ceiling, like in one shot. Um, so it's a little different kind of thing. And um, the reliability as far as shipping is always really good. Where certain hot items are sometimes hard to get from some companies. Um, I'm gonna say like this. Um, I like both. You know, I like the classics. I like Gibson. I like Fender. I like Stetson. Um, but I also like Lucky Dog guitars, and I like you know a Valencia too. Um, they're different. You know, I'm not gonna say one is better than the next, but there's a little bit of, of difference. They're different. You know. Um, the imported stuff is supposed to come last because you know it's made to order and it's going through uh, customs and all that uh, you know stuff. Uh, what do you call it? You know when you go through the you know customs and there's tariffs or whatever, and all that stuff they do, and uh, trucking companies and there's all this stuff you know that uh, is going on internationally and it's, it's supposed to be the last stuff to arrive. But generally, it's the first stuff to, to arrive these days. So it's kind of, um, you know, people are sort of uh, checking them out. And they're really, they're really happy with it. If you notice, you know, like the stitches, the tack stitches on, on your hats, like that keep the, stick, the, uh, the band on. Some of the bigger companies, they'll be like uh, nylon threads that somebody's paid to cut, you know, and you could tell they cut them like this. You know, they just cut them, and they left, you know, the pieces, so you gotta trim it with a nail. But when you go custom, every thread is in place. There's not a thread out of place, there's no different hats, there's nothing, no anomalies as far as fit. Everything is, like, dead on. Um, the, the whole, um, process can be a little bit tougher, you know, it, it takes time, you have to sort of design a line for yourself, um, and you have to be familiar with the line, because, you know, when they come in, if they come in and the brims are too soft, um, you have to know, oh, uh, well, we got to make the brims a little extra stiff, you know, um, but it can be really worth it, um, I think especially in the caps, um, you know, the caps is really nice. Uh, our lines like uh, Jonathan Richards, Hannah Hats, um, and Alfonso Deste from uh, Italy, they're among the, the best, best custom cap uh, makers, some of the oldest too. Um, and uh, Alfonso, we can get uh, anything we want from them, from linen to leather, we can get Irish tweed or uh, Scottish Harris tweeds. and. Uh, the Irish brands like Hannah Hats and Jonathan Richards are some of the only flat caps that have a couple of models that use plastic bills instead of uh, paper. You know, there's something that they call visor board, which is sometimes kind of a cardboard. Other times it's cardboard that's kind of like dipped, like uh, in some sort of a foamy kind of a plastic even. Other times it can actually be sort of a bendable foam kind of a thing, which is great, but that's rare. Most of the time the riser board and caps are just like cardboard, the same thing that they put inside your baseball caps. Um, you know, you can bend it, it's thick cardboard, you can shape it and stuff. The only problem with that is that some people have a problem kind of, you know, they bend their bill on their, on their flat cap, but then they, they play with it, they keep bending it and stuff, and then you make like a little hinge, it cracks. So you know what happens to paper when you fold it a million times, you know? It gets like an actual, like a, a fold in it, you know, or kind of a, a tear but it's still holding together. You know what cardboard's like, you know? Fold it, fold it a million times. It's not like really solid anymore. You get this, 
And then like the bill gets this kind of V flap, flap, flap thing in the front and it's pretty much dead, you know? Um, other times the visor board can dry out if somebody left it in a hot place for a long, long time. It kind of disintegrates and cracks and turns into pieces inside. So a really common question, people come in with caps and they're like, hey, do you guys change that little thing in the front? No, we don't. Um, we don't do any of that stuff. It's, it's not really hat making. It's closer to something, uh, it's called cut and sew. Um, anything that's like a leather, a suede or cloth uh, brimmed hat or, or caps. Uh, any kind of cap, flat caps, newsboys, Greek fishermen, um, or whatever, Sherlock Holmes, they're all considered uh, cut and sew. They're made the same way a tailor makes your clothing, pretty much. Um, so, you know, they're, you know, it's made out of flat fabric that they cut, you know, and they sew it together, they use patterns and stuff. And uh, we can't change that, though. We don't do any of that stuff, you know, like sewing of bill we don't have visor board we don't know how to repair caps it's a completely different industry there are people online who make vintage caps like handmade custom vintage caps even out of vintage fabric some of them you know you could get some of the styles that they don't make anymore like the ivy caps that are really wide you know from the 1800s like the swing dancers wear um, those guys might repair a cap um, so there are some of the other only people but uh, getting back to it, um, our Irish companies, Jonathan Richards and Hannah Hats, um, John Hannah, they both have a couple of models with plastic bills, which is phenomenal. They're the only, only ones. Um, although Alfonso had a couple of uh, hats with, uh, with foam in it that you could actually just roll the hat up and stick in your pocket, like a, a crushable bill that just opened up and was right again, it was really cool. Um, but plastic, only these two Irish companies have it. Not every one of their hats. Um, I think with Jonathan Richards, the flat cap called the Snap Driver, and the newsboy called the Tully. Those both have uh, plastic uh, peaks. And with uh, Hannah hats, there's a, uh, a Gatsby eight quarter, uh, eight piece hat, newsboy. The Gatsby model, and their flat cap is called the Kerry, K-E-R-R-Y. And those two uh, have plastic reinforcements also. You know, they have it in the bill and they also have it up here where it pins to it. So both, there's plastic in both, I think. So it's kind of, you put the two plastics together. Plus you could shape it. You could bend the plastic and shape it and everything. Um, and it stays put just like the cardboard did. But First of all, it never breaks. It never, never breaks. It doesn't snap and split like the, the paper ones do. But more importantly, you could never wash your caps before because of that paper in the front. Now what you could do is you can hand wash your caps. You get some woolite, you know, like a, whatever, a quarter cap full of woolite or something. And you clean the sink and you put some like uh, warm water in the sink and um, you pull the lining out of the cap. You separate the lining scrub the line and wash it, rinse it out, no, none of that uh, ringing stuff, just rinse it, get all the soap out of the lining, then you clean the, the cap, you do it with like a little uh, brush, a fingernail brush, one of those little ones, you just brush it, brush it, okay, and um, you avoid the peak, you know, and then um, when it's time to do the peak, you, you do it, and you run the water through it. And since there's plastic in there, um, you're good. Um, most of all, get the sweatband. The sweatband is where, you know, 90% of the, the dirt is. So brush the sweatband all the way around, clean it, rinse it out with water, put it down on a towel to dry. Um, no hot rooms. If your room is hot in the winter time, put it somewhere else, uh, the bathroom or the kitchen, open the window a little. It can dry in a cold room. Um, or room temperature, but if your room has got heat on, it's going to shrink it, so don't do that. Crack the window or something and uh, put it by the window. And uh, let it dry, and then um, what you can do is uh, stuff it to get the wrinkles out. Stuff the whole cap really tight, so it's as tight as you can. You make little pancakes of, um, of tissue or something, or newspaper, fill it up. So you can't get another little pancake of paper in there. It's totally tight, like a drum tight. 
and then let it dry like the last, you know, three quarters of its time. When it's going to dry, let it dry like that, stuffed and tight. Um, or, you know, the last half, you know. Let it dry a little, stuff it, and then let it dry completely. Because um, you want it to dry, you know, without stuffing it. And when it's like almost dry, you can stuff it so it dries without wrinkles. Or you just let it dry, see if it gets wrinkly. If it does, you stuff it and steam it stuff and that will that will get rid of the wrinkles either technique works so that's how you wash a cap it should have been a separate video right um, but yeah uh summers are coming summer straws are coming so uh, we're not going to be getting too many more felts in um, but a lot of the felts are going now 30 percent off you know a lot of them are even 50 percent off in the back room area um, everything in the shop is 30 or 50% off. That's like a crazy, crazy sale. Um, what's left? You know, a lot of the stuff is going, uh, the cost of these sales, and um, the idea is to pay the bills and to buy you summer hats and to uh, start kicking the next uh, season, you know. So uh, take advantage of the 30%. If you're thinking about buying something, just go on the website, uh, jjhatcenter.com, and see what's in stock. You know, the, the sales stuff is called the back room section. Um, and um, you could also go to new arrivals to see what uh, the newest stuff is. Um, we got a couple of straws in lately. Uh, I know we got the, the Chelsea and that boater, but uh, they're gonna start coming in soon. They're Predominantly, I'm going to say May, um, but uh, through April too, you're going to see some straws coming. That's about it, I think. Let's play this uh, Ash, ash Thorpe a little. Let's see what's going on here. Composing, lonesome blue. It 
Just to show you don't know Watch his car be playing, play it slow Wait till your deal comes on Don't you let that deal go down Don't you let that deal go down Don't you let that deal go down them into effects it's really cool I'm gonna just fool around a little bit more here show you how cool this thing is
Thank <laughs> you. 